Today is February 15th, 2021, and today we're going to continue the series I've been doing on singleness and marriage. And um, today we're going to be reading 1 Corinthians 7, um, or at least part of it. And in this passage, Paul is writing to a church or a community of Christians that lived in Corinth um, back in the early days of Christianity. And in this chapter, he writes to them about the subject of marriage and singleness. And here's what he says. Um, this is Paul. He says, Now concerning the things about which you wrote to me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. But because of much immorality, let each man have his own wife and let each woman have her own husband. So the natural tendency um, with physical touch related things and relationships between men and women we all know what that's talking about uh things tend to get out of hand and uh all sorts of craziness can happen and so he says based on that one man and one woman let everybody have just one for each other and then he goes on he says in verse three let the husband fulfill his obligation to his wife and likewise also the wife to her husband and what does that mean obligation well what do married people do that according to the Bible, you're not supposed to do if you're not married. You know what it is. And so if you're married, you're supposed to be doing that for your spouse. You're supposed to be taking care of them if they need it, and you're supposed to communicate about that. See, I read an article one time about uh, a lady who got married and found herself continually still ashamed of her sexuality, essentially, and of her ability to enjoy that category of life because she grew up in church and this, the category of sex was so shamed and degraded by the church and church culture that she was ashamed of it and she still felt like it was sin. So she couldn't have sex with her husband and it had this huge issue in their marriage and what she was dealing with was disobedience to what this is saying here because of a culture of purity that actually is not pure. <laughs> so, uh, because part of purity is freedom within marriage of uh, sex, essentially. Uh, you get what I'm saying, guys? So, anyway, God created sex. It's And why did he create it? Well... You know, we're going to be talking about that more, but ultimately so that we could reproduce and make more people and build the community that's on the earth. That's what it's for. And so any pleasure we receive is an unnecessary byproduct. However, God also wants to bless us with that, with the pleasure. Um, but sex is not for pleasure, okay? Any more than anything else in the creation is for our pleasure. Um... It's for us to have a relationship with God through these things and enjoy them with him because he enjoys us enjoying them. But it's not about us. And that's the problem. What sin does is it makes it, like we talked about before, um, God is humble. He's not selfish. He calls us to be the same. That's why Jesus came to be our example to show us who God is and who we're meant to be so that we can humble ourselves, deny ourselves, take up our cross, um, and not go the way of Satan or the serpent who, you know, and even that, the way of Adam and Eve. Because what Satan and Adam and Eve have in common, they were both created in heaven, okay? So they, they were both created in perfect worlds without suffering. No evil, no pain, no sadness. They were created under these conditions, and yet they were not thankful they were not content. They somehow came to believe in a mysterious way, and as the Bible calls it a mystery, mystery of sin, evil, and lawlessness, that God was robbing them, that he was cheating them, and that he was somehow the evil one, that he was the bad guy. Somehow, even though he provided all these good things, they felt like he was withholding something from them. And so, then comes rebellion. And so, I was a little bit of a going off there from that. But the point is that um, we need to learn to be thankful and appreciate what is good and to not be selfish 
and greedy, because selfishness goes with greedy, and that's what the Bible says, do not covet, right? That's the tenth of the Ten Commandments. What's interesting, the first is have no other gods before me, before God, and the second is have no idols. They kind of go together, but they are different. That's a whole other detail. But my point in saying that is... Um, Later on, Paul, in multiple cases, not here, but he says covetousness is idolatry, which means technically the first and the tenth commandment are the same commandment. It's just a different perspective because our perspective is limited. See, God is spirit, and those who worship him and know him must know him, worship him in spirit and in truth. And so what that means is it's a whole other level. Spirit is a whole other level that's beyond our comprehension because we think in bodily terms. And so to God... Things that are happening are so much, there's a much broader perspective. There's many more dimensions and sides to things that we don't see. A lot of, of other angles. And so this is why we must trust him, you see. And this is why he, he teaches us these things in the Bible. So coveting, same thing as idolatry. They're the same thing. Being selfish, same thing. Sin, same thing. It's all, it's all connected. And so... I feel like this is just a big rant, but I hope you're getting <laughs> getting something out of it. Um, so we'll return then to this. So it's important to have a healthy sex life in marriage, okay, which means you communicate about it and you um, <laughs> don't go into it feeling like you're sinning, okay? You cannot be ashamed of that. You need to bring that to Jesus, okay? When you have sexual desire, you bring that to Jesus, you don't just suppress it, okay? I personally believe that why there's some really horrible, nasty things that have happened in the church and in Catholic churches around sex with like pedophilia even at the worst and other things is because people suppress sexuality and sex. They keep it in the dark. They don't talk about it. They don't explore it. People, like, I feel like pastors can't even say even like you have to hint, even at the beginning of the video, I felt like I had to hint about I can't say sex or like, and this is, this type of thing gives the sin, it gives Satan power, okay, because you're keeping it in the dark and you need to bring it into the light so that these things can be discussed. So you need to communicate about that. You need to have a healthy sex life. It's important in marriage. Okay, continuing. So wives, make sure you take care of your husbands. Husbands, Take care of your wives, you know. It goes both ways. So <laughs> the wife does not have the rights to her own body, but the husband. Oh, there you go. You think you got rights. You think you're entitled? No. And then he continues. Likewise, also, the husband does not have the rights to his own body, but the wife. Do not deprive one another except by mutual consent. Ooh, the C word. <laughs> yeah. Consent by mutual consent for a time so that you may devote yourselves to prayer. And so sometimes you fast in marriage from sex, but it's a fast. You're supposed to eat every day. You know, I'm not saying you're supposed to have sex every day, although I think in a healthy marriage, you know, I, I know I, I won't say their names, but I know of a married couple, very godly. <laughs> And I learned, essentially, from, you know, openness and that they, even though they're much older, um, like older than you would expect, they still have sex basically every day or, or multiple times a week. That is very healthy, okay? So, <laughs> in marriage, that, that's what he's saying. He's saying multiple verses about this because it is important it's important for the bond. It's just a, it's an important thing. Yes, it's for having children. That's the purpose what God created for. But also, it's just an important thing to do. It's part of our bodies. So, um, he says, you can fast the sex for prayer. But then he says, um, I'll get a, go a little over 10 minutes today just so I finish the passage because we're almost done. Um, then come together again so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. So it gets us in trouble. 
<laughs> but this I say as a concession, not as a command. Yet I wish that all men were like me. However, each man has his own gift from God, one in this way and another in that way. So we're going to get to the last thing I just read in a second, but finishing up the sex. <laughs> How many times have I said sex in this video? It's good to talk about it, though. So I feel like, oh, man, Christians need to talk about this stuff more. Really, really do. I know from multiple sources, so many conversations, the damages that have been done to people's lives because this thing's kept in the dark in every angle and so many other things, not just relating to marriage. But anyway, um, <sighs> self-control, that's what I wanted to say. Self-control does not just mean, oh, you, um, you don't give in to temptation and you, uh, you keep it in your pants. Self-control. Self, yes, obviously, we all know that. And some, some of you out there, I don't know if you're watching this, but some of you needs more self-control in that area. You are, um, you are not self-controlled. You know, you're, your private parts may rule you. That's not how it's supposed to be. Your God is not between your legs. Your God is above you. Okay. <laughs> so the, the one true God, you know, your God is not supposed to be between your legs. You're not supposed to, uh, <laughs> I want to start making puns, but that's going to be a little too offensive for my viewers, I think. But anyway, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, we all know that. But I also wanted to say with self-control, self-control also means knowing when to, when you're married, take your clothes off and get down to business. That's part of self-control, okay? So um, knowing when to act, not just to restrain, when to act. Both of those things are part of self-control. Um, so having lack of self-control, a lot of people think, oh, yeah, um, you know, pe people in marriage are like, yeah, we don't even want to have sex. So we, well, this happens in marriage. It's really sad for those of you who don't know, but people stop having sex. Very common thing. It is known among the, <laughs> the marriage, but, um, you know, that doesn't mean you have great self-control, okay? As a matter of fact, if you're commanded to have sex in marriage, sometimes even as a way of honoring God and for children, which is what marriage is for, but... <laughs> then I would say that you have a lack of self-control if you're in the opposite extreme. That's what I'm saying. So I hope you see that. You can take that or leave it. Last thing we're going to discuss today, if we wrap this up, Paul says he wishes that everybody, all men could remain as he is and women too, but he says each has their own gift. This connects to what we talked about the other day in Matthew 19, what Jesus says. He talked about the gift. What is the gift? Do you guys remember? It was, sorry for the face, I'm, I'm trying to get a cover thing for the IG thing. The gift is singleness. Singleness is a gift, but not everyone can receive this gift. It's a gift from God. And Paul confirms that here with the finishing verse I'm going to read. I'm not reading the whole chapter, just up through verse 9. He says, Paul says, But I say to the unmarried and to widows that it is good for them to remain as I am. So in other words, it's better to stay single. Again. But if they do not have self-control, let them marry. For it is better to marry than to burn with desire. It adds that in this translation, but it just says to burn in the original language. Better to marry than to burn. And some people are like, well, burn in hell. Uh, no, not necessarily. Burn with desire. Uh, maybe, you know, so it could be taken either way, but that's the passage for today. Um, I don't have time to share the, the, the series is continuing. I'm not sure how long this one's going to last, but man, I'm getting more content with this one every day. Um, the big thing I'm going to release is coming soon. If not tomorrow, probably the next day. God bless you guys. Have a great day.